Hello everybody, it's Max with Crypto Talk now. At some point in your crypto journey, if you will, you were introduced the concept of just that, cryptocurrency. And with that said, you may have already thought at the moment of being introduced the concept of cryptocurrency of how can I pay for certain goods and services with this thing called crypto? And I basically buy groceries with it. And I go to the movie theater and pay for it. Whatever the case be, can I use this alternate form of payment to buy just that? Goods, services, entertainment, you name it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's Stellar Lumens coverage. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little emphasis on this right here first. It's basically Starbridge. This was something that was introduced not that long ago. I want to say roughly, oh man, late, well actually early 2022. Yeah, roughly March of 2022. So Starbridge, like it shows right here, was a trust uh, minimized bridge between Stellar and other blockchains. Now, when I got into the nitty gritty of this, specifically mentions that Stellar, of course, was becoming an established interoperability layer between a wide variety of financial systems, of course, a growing number of Stellar anchors. Now, with that said, let's take a moment to break some of this down, because if anything, you can kind of see where we're at when it comes to this implementation period we're going into to trigger utility run. Basically, when this was written, it states that today users can redeem assets in their Stellar wallets off network for an actual dollar, or in some case, pesos and so on. We gave you guys uh, particular case studies, right, in our, pre our previous Stellar coverage. Um, and basically, you use this for another, you know, fiat currency to put in your pocket and so on, right? Uh, we established the whole thing with MoneyGram, so on and so forth. But when you see the particular breakdown that you see right here, right, Stellar, bank networks, blockchains, and so on, you draw that particular connection that Stellar could very well be the cryptocurrency of the retail world. You and me, right, could finally be that particular cryptocurrency that kicks in that utility to pay for common things. And what excites me the most is... Again, I'll use this particular reference. When you saw a lot of price action happen with all-time highs for Ethereum and so on, what stood out specifically for that? Right? You got to uh, mint NFTs and so on. You got to. If you want to do that, gas fees, Ethereum. You want to buy ERC twenty token, like you know a particular meme token, right? All the specific things required that mechanism of gas fees over and over and over again. And as a result, by utilizing that particular utility, it triggers what? A tremendous amount of demand for that specific blockchain, that utility from Ethereum. Now, this is a stellar video, obviously. So what is the connection in regards to the point I'm trying to make? Well, the point I'm trying to make is just that, is, is Stellar, you know, basically solves some of these things by actually having a real-world use case, like converting, for instance, fiat straight to an actual digital asset, or cryptocurrency, I should say, to be able to solve things for people, you know, all around the world, Nigeria, various different countries, and so on then if we're at a stage right now with the global financial crisis or the logistical breakdown of supply chain or this particular person who wants to get paid in American dollars, you name it, what one, again, stands out as being that precursor, if you will, to get it done? Me, again, it's stellar. And we're going to break down these specific reasons why this is, you know, something that 
we should all look into. Why specifically Stellar? So it says, Stellar is to strive towards its mission to create equitable access to the world's financial infrastructure. That's absolutely true. We know that. It says it needs to be a bridge, not just the financial system thing here, but the financial system it's evolving into, which now includes, of course, other blockchain networks by participants um, in the Stellar ecosystem like Pendulum and Flare, been hearing a lot about Flare as of recently, are enabling access to other blockchains through development of technologies, bridging, of course, just that, blockchain to blockchain. Now, back in March of 2022, specifically Starbridge was mentioned as a new particular project. Now, in regards to that, the significance of it is it was the integration between Stellar and Ethereum. Now, when we get more into this, you see, for instance, that the development and design of Starbridge was, of course, just getting started at that point. They, from there, were setting out with the following requirements, as you see right here, to interoperate with Ethereum, transfer value, uh, you know, basically be decentralized, all these other particular examples, right? Fees paid by um, what you see right here, SRC slash DEST. And of course, it's got to have good latency. Um, now, in regards to the interoperability with Ethereum and the significance in regards to this, it interoperates with Ethereum, but the starting point, like you see right here, is that Starbridge will interoperate with one network, which is just that, Ethereum, where a significant amount of DeFi, of course, as we know, are built today. That's why you saw, for instance, just crazy gas fees. Um, if anything, um, I believe Solana provided a void or a disruption, um, if you will. Uh, when we saw, for instance, Solana was one of the top players of 2021. Why is that? Because if anything, it was a lot cheaper platform for NFTs. It was a lot more uh, attractive, if you will. Or NFT projects because for one they're not getting hit with those crazy fees and of course price was in a reflection of that but why is that why are we mentioning these specific things the key takeaway I want for you guys is basically it is utility 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 now while we put a lot of focus on a few of these specific things we have to build the case for utility drives for instance more of the adoption that we need. Got to have that specific utility. Hence, why we feel as though they're going, there's going to be a utility run. There's never, there never was a utility run in crypto before. But with Stellar Lumens, it definitely stands out as being just that. Now, of course, you know, X, I'm a big fan of XRP. Don't get me wrong, and so on. But I think when it comes to Stellar, it flies under the radar too much. Right? There's not enough coverage. Um, the specifics, like you really have to take some of your deep dive and so on, and hence why I'm here to do this with you guys. Now, some of the specific things that is support uh, that's important in regards to Starbridge is outlined here, and that's basically, you know, for instance, the decentralization of just that. As governance of the deployed technologies forming Starbridge should be decentralized with at least closed participation to minimize or mitigate the trust that users need to place in a single Starbridge operator. But here's one of the cool things that stood out for me came to this. this. The offline wallet support, right? Think about that for a moment. So when you have Stellar Lumens, right, you're able to send a payment to somebody in the middle of the Congo. I always use this particular reference. And what's significant about that is just that, an offline wallet. Why? Maybe somebody doesn't have a smartphone. If you look into the particular technology with XLM, they have developed technology basically designed for older phones, like a flip phone. Remember those from way back? Why are they doing that? Again, it's part of supplying a demand for that particular utility. Yeah, that's Web 2 functions of the old world, if you will. But a lot of people still happen to use that. So if Stellar is supplying the need for having an alternate method of basically cashing in, uh, 
your physical cash and converting it to the likes of crypto for you can instantly send payment to somebody in the middle of nowhere who has no internet whatsoever solving things that basically let's face it western union tries to solve but that takes basically two to three weeks for a person in the middle of nowhere to get their payment and oh by the way there's a huge fee then how do we get to a crazy amount of adoption where the whole darn world finally comes into crypto well i believe it starts with the likes of a cryptocurrency hence stellar to get that job done you have a whole outline of how this specifically happens now the specific uh explanation when it comes to offline wallet support listen to this if the source and destination wallets in a transfer different wallets the wallet should not need to be online at the same time correct that in itself is a tremendous utility and this is just again one of many utilities for stellar in regards to fees you know we're talking about for instance the whole thing with um ethereum you know huge gas fees i remember getting hit with 300 dollars plus gas fee at the end of 2021 going into 2022 trying to i hate to say it get into a particular meme coin right but look at this blockchain network fees should be paid by the source or destination wallet in regards to that throughput it states the deploy technology forming star bridge should introduce no constraint on the throughput in comparison to the throughput capabilities on just that the blockchain networks that are integrated on top of that we need to have fast latency if you happen to be a gamer you, you immediately know what i'm talking about like if i'm playing call of duty right i want to have anywhere from like a 30 to a 50 ping that's a pretty darn good connection i don't want to get slapped with like a 200 or 300 ping right guy is going to be skipping all over the place well to a sense right even that much more when it comes to the likes of a payment mechanism you have to have good latency specifics the deploy technology forming star bridge should introduce no more than a five second latency on top of the confirmation or finality times of the blockchain networks so whatever payments being sent to from point a to point b it simply needs to be extremely fast, efficient, and if anything, secure. Because let's face it, some people have that too. Well, you know, we established that Visa and MasterCard, those transactions per second are significantly faster than the likes of, for instance, Stellar Lumens. The point is to be able to, for instance, send the payment to somebody by converting what you already have into the form of crypto without diminishing the value of their native currency a good example would be for instance the currency of nigeria and so with that said this is a good segue to get into this specific use case this is a particular case study and this particular project is built on just that stellar we're going to go ahead and jump into that coverage right now stellar was created for currencies and payment this technology they understand exactly what market needs lagos is a very vibrant aquatic city it's the financial center of nigeria current greater systems is a fintech company that uses blockchain technology to enable cross-border payments I like Paris. It's really a very beautiful city. Tempo France is a payment institution to provide money transfer business for individuals and businesses. One of the fundamental reasons why it's difficult to make cross-border payments from Nigeria is due to the fact that the Nigerian currency Naira is not globally traded. Legacy cross-border payments have not kept up with modern technology Whenever customers have to make payments, they normally have to go through many intermediaries, which leads to a loss of value and makes their payments more expensive. When we joined the Anchor program, uh, we came across Tempo, 
Tempo is a stellar anchor, and that means they issue a token that represents euro currency. Kauri, we issue a token that represents the Nigerian currency. And in our partnership with Tempo, we transact over the Stellar network where we trade these tokens. Immediately, Euro becomes Eurot, Eurot becomes Nigerian NGNT, and then NGNT becomes Nigerian Naira. What Stellar can give you is liquidity for your currency, and also payments are regulated correctly by all the jurisdictions served by Stella. Clients can check any transaction from the beginning to the end. We started out by serving mostly retail users, people who would purchase cryptocurrency. But ever since we opened up the Nigerian-European corridor, we're able to acquire business clients, and we've seen a lot of growth ever since then. Transaction time, which means speed, it takes less than 10 seconds and we increased our business five times during one year. We've seen five times growth in daily payments over the last year. Today, we send 500,000 euro per week from Nigeria to Europe. We are not going to stop only with Nigerian market. We are going to grow and extend our business in many countries and worldwide. We're really looking forward to having global coverage for our cross-border payments business. All right, welcome back. I was really, really glad to be able to provide that to you. Uh, for some of you guys who are really, really, you know, gung ho on Stellar and take some of your own deep dives, and maybe you've seen that particular video clip. But we're going to continuously provide this type of content to people who are part of the Stellar community. On top of that, you can read most of these particular list of requirements in regards to specifically the Star Bridge. But one of the cool things I want to mention here is that Star Bridge will transfer two types of assets to facilitate symmetrical bi-directional capabilities. Those are basically local assets and wrapped assets. And you have to have an understanding of how this works. So if you're wondering about some of the terminology in regards to all this, local assets are the assets that you find on just that blockchain, right? And that people are using already. Um, a good example, for instance, is XLM on Stellar, okay? Wrapped assets, on the other hand, you know, you heard some of these particular terms and so on. Those are created on the destination blockchain by Starbridge to represent a local asset being sent from sending blockchain. Now, in regards to the specifics of Starbridge, Starbridge will use these assets to perform two types of transfers. This is some of the technical nitty gritty of all this. So a send of a local asset that would be used as a wrapped asset. Here's some particular examples of how this works. You have, for instance, the starting initial point of that particular account and how that is deposited into a bridge account. Then from there, you have, for instance, the alternate um, form of it on a different blockchain, for instance, Ethereum. How you have, for instance, that account, there's a bridge contract, then it, it has to be minted, right? And we got to keep in mind, once that is minted, yeah, that's the gas fee. Right, and that goes to, for instance, an ERC-20 contract. That's an expensive fee. With Stellar, it cuts that out completely, right? So huge savings, and on top of that, for fractions of a penny, right? When we get more into this, keep in mind that a return of a wrapped asset that unlocks a local asset, right? And of course, it gives you a particular breakdown of how that works, right? With Stellar, you have point A, the account, Number two, the withdrawal bridge account. Boom, done. Ethereum, on the other hand, always has that particular extra step. See right here. On top of this, it says when local assets are deposited into the bridge, they will be locked up, of course, in an actual account or a contract. Uh, basically, when this happens, you're going to see stats for bridges um, that will basically look at what is referred to as total value locked, aka TVL. A lot of us know about some of this stuff. And that's basically a measurement for success, right? The methodology uh, of being that more deposits to a sense equals higher total value locked. 
Here's how Starbridge works at a high level. We'll give you more of a particular breakdown of how this works. Um, so as you can see right here, it says the account contract where assets are locked up will be controlled by a group of Starbridge operators. And of course, in this particular diagram listed below, it will show you exactly how it works. But I'll read this part. Each Starbridge operator will hold their own unique key and all together they will basically control the account slash contract. Control and decentralization will be established using a basically an M of N signer setup. Now if you're wondering what that entails, there's a little bit more of that breakdown. So here's an example. It says when we say M of N, right? Because you're probably wondering what the heck does that mean? Is we mean there is some number of signers n who can authorize transactions and for a transaction to be authorized a subset of those signers m must sign and of course to see how this is all made on this particular diagram i really like the visual you know so I saw more of this and so on, and I, I realize this, this is quite the deep dive, but it, there's a lot of significance regards this because it really gives you a really good visual breakdown on how this all works. That's the key takeaway here. So here's another example. It says, if the signer configuration is three of five, any three of the five signers, for instance, need to authorize. This means there's a tolerance failure. Tolerance to nefarious or neglect, or I should say not like negligent behavior and decentralized control of the locked value. The flow of transfer takes only a few steps. And you see how this works. You have, for instance, the wallet goes to the deposit slash burn, straight to Stellar. Um, and then you see some of these other ones, right? How it basically is broken down. And on top of that, you see, for instance, how it works with Ethereum. I get more into some of the nitty gritty. I want to show this real quick. And that is to start a transfer, a wallet would deposit a local asset into one chain, or if it is returning a wrapped asset, burn the asset using the issuing account or contract. When they do this, if you're still following me with this, hopefully you are, the wallet will specify a destination for the transfer on the other chain. And when this happens, basically, the receiving wallet will, of course, request the Starbridge nodes to replicate the deposit into the other chain. Now, I don't want to mention all this other stuff because I, I realize it's just really, really getting to the technical aspect of this. But the cool thing about this is you have an idea of how this all works. And this, you know, some of the big steps that is taken away, for instance, some of that minting some of the burns, some of these extra things that simply throw out more and more fees specifically, right? And of course, there's some you know, particular examples here and so on, which they do a very good job of breaking that down. Um, but well, one thing I want to point out is this was back in March, states, March of last year, 2022, right? It's still hard to believe that we're in 2023. So Starbridge is a very early development, right? But they're more into it now and they're continuing to iterate or iterate i should say on the design and its capabilities that's one of the key things i wanted to share with you guys the capabilities is unbelievable it says as this project gets more refined they look to basically have um, successful measurements and hope to assess ways it can go beyond just what beyond total value locked right why not by creating metrics informed by interoperability and access, which is, of course, the heart of their particular mission, and rightfully so, it should be. You see the passion of what they're trying to solve and so on. We gave you that particular example uh, with that gentleman from Nigeria and what he is doing building on just that stellar. It's really, really impressive to see these particular case studies and so on, right? So it states, on top of that, we think Starbridge is a meaningful way that we'll be able to maintain and build Stellar's role in the financial system by fostering access within and beyond a blockchain. Right? And that is, that's where it's at for me. It's recognizing specifically that. Because if you go, you know, um, fostering that access, 
beyond blockchain, then if anything, that's where we establish, you know what? This is an alternate uh, way of doing business or paying for things, goods and services and so on. This is the, you know, what you originally thought cryptocurrency should be. When you're originally introduced what crypto was all about, you're thinking, well, can I pay for this crypto? Stellar is basically that answer. So before we close things out, I want to point this. And that is this last particular sentence. By increasing accessibility to stellar strengths, both through traditional payment rails and other blockchains, the financial system can continue to evolve and innovate to ever greater heights. I'm completely on board with that way of thinking. I'm really, really excited to see where Starbridge is still going. It's not completely done. But if anything, I think with all the focus specifically on Ripple's XRP and so on with the on-demand liquidity. In the future, when we hear that Starbridge is done, I think there's going to be a lot more eyeballs on specifically Stellar Lumens XLM. Now, I want to get to this particular area here again before we wrap things up. And that is this. All right. So there's this particular line about, for instance, how Stellar helps you track all of your assets with an order book, right? You can sell, you can buy, you can manage all your assets, but with XLM acting as an intermediary currency for paying transaction fees, the currency is very useful for the users because it helps you reduce transaction costs. And that's where it's at right now when it comes to various cryptos. Transaction costs. At the end of the day, you can have the greatest utility in the world. But if no one's going to basically use that, then what's the point? Right? Stellar Network makes transactions seamless and reduces fees for micropayments and remittances in order to make financial services affordable and accessible to the world. And again, kind of like that particular uh, case study you saw, for instance, from that gentleman from Nigeria, that kind of just tells it all right there in itself, right? That affordable and you know it's got to be affordable and accessible to the world and it is i mean he uses the perfect example with um his particular currency in nigeria on top of that transactions on the stellar platform are performed swiftly due to the ease of just that the lumens that's why it's called stellar lumens the currency not only makes transactions seamless for the sender and the recipient but also ensures that transactions are just that secure so it's not just you know oh we're fast we can be secure at the same time there was this particular quote from jed mccaleb who happens to be the co-founder and cto of stellar in that particular cmc interview he was quoted to say this maybe that affects the price maybe price is secondary indicator of how useful the underlying protocol is in some way but i think that the trend is there that there or that where price and utility can come into play price and utility so it's not just you know recognizing hey we got an amazing blockchain or we got an amazing technology and it's not being used we see mass adoption with the likes of stellar lumens because it solves one of the biggest use cases out there in the entire world and that is what you were originally introduced to it in with in closing, I want to also give you one more update. It says a special gift to the XLM community from Uphold. I know a lot of you guys use Uphold. This made recent news, and I'm trying my best to keep up with these particular news updates. It says we have integrated with the Stellar network. You can now deposit and withdraw your private external wallets on just that the Stellar network, XLM. And it's now fully integrated from uphold again this was posted at the end of december a lot of times when it comes to stellar news it flies under the radar i was really really glad to bring you guys this information in regards to this particular deep dive i'm feeling very very bullish to say the least when it comes to xlm i feel as though their time is so incredibly near and they are definitely part of what i refer to as this particular utility run because if anything, 
they saw real world use case for not just people who may have heard of cryptocurrency, but they solve real world issues and problems. Hence that particular case study from the gentleman from Nigeria and other countless examples that we have brought to you either on the live show or in the recorded. But if Stellar Lumens ends up being the quote unquote cryptocurrency of the world, or just average everyday type of persons like yourself and and so on, then to me that triggers one key thing mass adoption and on top of that for holders like us that generational wealth that we're looking for thanks for watching today's video everybody like comment subscribe if you haven't done so already we will see you on the next one